All right, this is fifth grade, module two, lesson 10, where we are going to be multiplying decimals. And uh, But true to form, we're not really going to start off with that standard algorithm. Instead, we're going to use some basic place value understanding and record their partial products so that we can guide our students towards understanding the standard algorithm. But we want to teach them using place value and common sense. So when we finally teach them the standard algorithm, it makes sense. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be multiplying 53 times 1.2. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to estimate. So if we estimate, well, 53 is about 50. 1.2 is about 1. And so we know that our answer is going to be about 50. All right. So now, using the area model... What we're going to do is we're going to think of this 1.2. We're really going to think of this 1.2 as 12 tenths. All right. We're going to think of it as 12 tenths. So our rectangle is going to be 12 tenths wide and 53 units high. And so we're going to break that up into 50 and 3. All right, so now our first rectangle is 3 times 12 tenths, and that's 36 tenths. 36 tenths. And then down here we've got 50 times 12 tenths, and that's going to be 600 tenths. Now, when we add these together, we get 636 tenths. Now, if we wanted to, we can kind of zoom in, and we can think of, oh, I want to zoom in, 636 tenths. So 636 tenths, um, let's see, here's our ones, here's our tens, here's our hundreds, and so here is our tenths. And if we had 636 tenths, that really equals uh, the 6 would go here and the 3 and the 6. So this is our decimal point. Oops, I don't like the fact that I put a decimal point there. Um, but there's our decimal point here. And so 636 tenths is equal to 63.6. So if we kind of zoom back in and zoom back over here, so the fact that we got 63 right here, 63.6, and our estimation was 50, hey, that tells us we're pretty darn close. Now all of that is using the standard, or the like a non-standard algorithm, that's partial products. So let's take a look at what this would look like if we use the traditional or the standard algorithm, and we're going to do that over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply, and we're going to kind of think of this 1.2 as 12 tenths. So just think of it as 12 tenths. And that label doesn't really play into your mathematics uh, so to speak, but it does play into how we interpret our answer. So let's multiply. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, and then that's a 5, so really, I mean, that's a, really a 50. That 5 is really a 50, so we know it's going to end in a 0. 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. And then you can see, so here's our 36, there's a 36. Here's our 600, there's our 600. Now we're going to add these together, and again, we get 636 tenths, which is equal to 63.6. All right, using our, don't forget, we're using our little place value chart to understand that 636 tenths is equal to 6, six tens, 3 ones, and 6 tenths left over. All right.
All right, with this problem, we're going to kind of guide our students one step closer towards that standard algorithm. But instead of doing that, that silly thing of saying, well, let's just ignore the decimal and let's multiply. And then at the end, we're going to move our decimal some sort of randomly, you know, in some direction and stuff. That doesn't really uh, make sense to students as, in terms of like, why am I doing that? So here is a, an attempt to explain that. So we're going to start with 3.3 times 16. Uh, but really, I'm going to multiply this guy by 10. And that's going to give me 33 times 16. Now I'm going to multiply 33 times 16 instead of 3.3 times 16. So when I multiply, 6 times 3 is 18, carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. That's a 1. It's not really a 1, it's a 10. So we know it's going to end in 0. So 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. We add. We get 528. But don't forget, we multiplied by 10 at the beginning. So when we get this, this answer down here, what we need to do is we need to take that and we need to divide it by 10 to get to our proper answer, which is 52.8. And that is about as close as we can get to our standard. I mean, that's, a, that's the standard algorithm. The idea is, though, that we're going to use this idea of multiplying by a power of 10 to turn our, our decimal into a whole number. And then we're going to divide by that same power of 10 to return our product to the proper answer. All right, let's practice that with a word problem. So Mr. Jansen uh, is building an ice rink in his backyard. Oh, I wish I had an ice rink in my backyard. Okay, that will measure 8.4 meters by 22 meters. What is the area of the rink? So we know that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be multiplying because we've got a rectangular rink, and we know we're being asked to find the area of that rink, and the area means we're going to multiply the length times the width. So let's do that, and we're going to use that standard algorithm. We're going to multiply 8.4 times 22. But prior to multiplying, I'm going to take that 8.4 and multiply it by 10. And in doing so, I get 84 times 22. Now let's multiply. So we get 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16. I'm going to put a 0 because we're going to multiply by 20 now. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16. We can add all that together. We get 8. Uh, 6 and 8 is 14, carry the 1. 6, 1 and 1 is 8. And then 1 is 1,848. But that is not the final answer because, don't forget, we multiplied initially by 10. So now we have to divide by 10. And when we divide by 10, we end up getting equals 184 point. Whoa, 184 point 8. Because when you're dividing by 10, you just kind of move that decimal over. And there is our answer. Ah, but really, if we're talking about area, we really should call it 184.8 square meters. Really, this is the better, more proper answer. And that's lesson 10, where we really started to use that standard algorithm to understand multiplying um, decimals. And the idea being, if you've got like 3.8 times 46, we're really going to begin by multiplying this by 10 to get 38 times 46. And then when, whenever we get whatever our answer is, 
We're going to divide it by 10 to return the answer to its proper place.